Welcome to AMRO Music. My name is Alan Compton, Director of Services Representative and Percussion Specialist here at AMRO. Today I'd like to walk you through the process of changing and tuning a marching bass drum head. The first thing to do is determine what drum head you would like to use as the replacement. There are quite a few different types of marching bass drum heads, so it might be best to first consider what type of sound you would like to hear from your bass drums. Here are some guidelines to use when deciding which head can provide the sound that you prefer. The first element to consider is the thickness of the head. A thinner, one-ply head will be more resonant and will have a higher fundamental tone, but will be less articulate than a thicker head. A thicker, two-ply head will provide more articulation and will have a lower fundamental tone, but will not be as resonant as the thinner head. The second element to consider is the finish of the head. A smooth, glossy finish will provide sharper articulation and a wider range of high-end overtones, which can help with the projection and clarity. A thicker finish, like the ones found on Remo suede or fiber skin heads, will have a warmer, more focused tone, but will provide lower articulation and resonance. Here is a list of the most popular marching bass drum heads we carry here at AMRO. The Remo Ambassador is a one-ply head that comes in smooth white and ebony finishes. They will have a bright resonant tone and lots of projection and articulation. Evans makes an equivalent to this drum head called the MS-1, which comes in a white finish only. These heads will need to be externally or internally muffled. The Remo Emperor is a two-ply head that comes in a smooth white finish, giving it a bright, punchy attack and low fundamental tone. This head will also need to be externally or internally muffled. The Remo Power Max is a one-ply head that comes in ebony, black suede, and white finishes. They have a great tone with lots of attack and projection. The two-ply version of this head comes in both ebony and white finishes and has a lower fundamental tone without sacrificing attack or projection. All Powermax base heads feature a free-floating muffling ring and an internal white dot, which reinforces the attack and eliminates the need for muffling. The Evans MX series comes in a one-ply version, the MX-1, and a two-ply version, the MX-2. Both models are available in black and white finishes. The Evans MX bass drum heads have a bright focused tone and feature a unique dampening system that can be manipulated by using the included felt inserts to customize the drum's sound to fit the playing environment. To remove the existing drum head, use a high tension drum key to loosen each tension rod gradually in a star or radial pattern. Loosen the first tension rod, then move to the tension rod directly across the drum from the first rod and loosen it. Move over one tension rod from that spot, loosen that rod, then move to the tension rod directly across from that one. Continue this pattern until you have loosened all of the tension rods where they can be easily turned with your fingers. Loosening and tightening in this pattern will evenly decrease or increase the tension of the drum head and reduce any chance of warping the drum's hoop or hardware. Once each tension rod is loosened, use your fingers to unscrew the tension rods the rest of the way. Leaving the tension rods hanging inside of the claws, remove them and set them aside. If possible, arrange them in a way that you can re-thread them back into the same casing from which they were removed. Now lift the hoop and the head from the drum and set them aside, taking note of the exact position that the hoop was sitting on the drum. Ideally, you will want to place the hoop back in its original position. This will help to eliminate any reassembly issues in case of slight warping of the hoop. If you want to, you can mark this position using a bit of tape or a light concealed mark with a pen or a pencil. Now that you have the head, hardware, and hoop off of the drum, this is a perfect opportunity to clean both the rim and the inside of the drum. Dust and other foreign particles can end up inside of your drum, so it's best to take care of this while the drum is disassembled. Wipe the inside of the drum and the bearing edge with a soft cloth like a towel or an old t-shirt. You can also take this opportunity to lightly tighten any casing screws that have been loosened by the drum's vibrations. At this point, you will want to apply any internal muffling needed. There are many different ways to muffle a marching bass drum, so it's best to experiment to find the method and material you prefer. If your bass drum needs internal or external muffling, AMRO carries Yamaha Tone Foam and Pearl Muffling Foam. Many people in the marching arts community are using upholstery foam applied to the inside of the drum shell with spray adhesive. If you're not sure what method you'd like to use, the Yamaha and Pearl Muffling Foam will work just fine, and instructions are available for both products. Now place the new drum head on the drum with the head's logo in the desired position. If necessary, this can be adjusted while the player wears the drum once the drum is reassembled, but before tension has been applied to the head. Once the head is in the desired position, replace the hoop in the position that it was before you removed it and hang the claws on the hoop with the tension rods lined up with their original casings. 
Insert the tension rods into the casings and tighten them with your fingers until they are as tight as you can get them with no help from a drum key. This should get the head to a good starting point before you begin to tune. Begin increasing the tension of the drum head one tension rod at a time in a star or radial pattern using quarter or half turns with the drum key until the drum head has an audible tone when lightly tapped with the mallet. It is important to use the proper implement when tuning a bass drum since bass drum mallets are engineered to create the appropriate sound for the instrument. Now begin tapping the drum head with the head of a bass drum mallet one to two inches away from the hoop at each tension rod and listen to the pitch. The goal is to adjust the pitch of the head at each tension rod to where they all have matching pitches, thereby making the drum head in tune with itself. Using the drum key, adjust the tension of each rod until the pitches are as close to each other as possible. Now use the drum key to tighten the drum head, still using the star or radial pattern, to raise the drum to the desired pitch. Once you reach the desired pitch, some fine tuning may be necessary to bring the drum back into tune with itself. Bass drum heads will likely settle over the first day or two of use as the head begins to stretch and seat over the bearing edge. This will cause the drum to drop in pitch. Use the same process as the last step we covered to bring the drum back to the pitch you prefer. That's it. Thanks for letting me walk you through the process of changing a marching bass drum head. Keep in mind that the mechanics of this procedure can basically apply to changing any key tuned synthetic drum head, although the tuning could vary depending on the type of drum. As you can probably tell, the basic mechanics are not difficult and the tuning can become second nature with just a little practice. That's all for now. Thanks and have a musical day.